Hey folks, welcome to another Vaughn Tips video. This time I'm going to continue on the same topic as last time, which is CSS and web components. So last time we were talking about how we can style components with Shadow DOM. So how we can use things like CSS properties and CSS parts to style things that are normally encapsulated within that shadow root. Now, this time around, I want to take a different approach. So I'm going to turn off the shadow DOM for my view components, and we're going to use some more traditional global CSS styles in our application. So let's go into the application and see how we can do this. My application, again, is downloaded from start.von.com. I have two views, view one and view two. I did a little bit of content here so that we have something to style. Now this time around, there's quite a bit of configuration needed. So instead of forcing you kind of watch me type all of that slowly, what I'll do is I'll show you what I did and then I'll leave a link in the show notes to the GitHub so you can go in and copy any of the code. So first of all, we need to install a couple of things. I installed style loader, which we'll use for loading CSS into the document and then TypeScript uh, plugin for CSS modules, which will allow us to do autocomplete on CSS class names. Now, if we take a look at the Vaadin uh, Webpack configuration, we can see for CSS, what it does is it uses CSS loader, then extract loader to turn that into a string, and then finally passes that to a lit CSS loader. And that was how, uh, how we were able to uh, import the CSS file and put it into the styles array in our lit element. Now, this time around, we want to override that. So what I, I did here in the Webpack configuration is I take the default rules, I filter out the existing CSS rule, and then I replace it with a new array. And here I have two rules. So one is for files ending in module CSS. Those I load as CSS modules uh, using CSS loader and style loader, uh, turning modules on, and anything ending in just CSS, I will load as a global style just using CSS loader and style loader. Then I've defined types for CSS modules. So they will be an object where the keys are of type string and they map to strings for the CSS or for the CSS class names. Then we need to configure our TypeScript uh, compiler by passing in that plugin that we installed. So TypeScript plugin CSS modules. All right, and for this plugin to get used, we need to make sure that we're using the workspace TypeScript version, not the global VS Code version. So the easiest way for that is go into a TypeScript file like this one and click on the version number here and select, select TypeScript version and make sure that you've selected use workspace, uh, workspace version like so. All right, so that should take care of most of the configuration. Now let's jump into the actual code. So in our front end folder, again, we have all of our front end assets. We have our views, we have view one uh, with some content. We have our warning div again. And in view two, again, we have a warning div here. So that way we can try the global styles. We have a styles folder with a shared styles JavaScript file. This is something we want to get rid of. And then we have the index file that is the main entry point to the application. So let's start by getting rid of this and putting in our global styles. So I'll move this import into the index file. And then I will create a new file here in the styles directory called styles.css. I will remove the JavaScript file. And in here, I'll create a class for our warning div. And again, let's do it very similar to what we had in the previous video. So thick black border for uh, border for pixel solid black background yellow padding 20 pixels margin 40 pixels zero. I think that was pretty close to what we had. And then in the index file, we will go ahead and import this file. So we'll import styles, styles.css. All right. So you can see our browser reloaded, but nothing happened. And that's expected. So we're, we're still using shadow DOM here, which means that this view is shielded from any global CSS. 
So in this case, I want to turn off Shadow DOM for all the views. And the easiest way for that, uh, for me to do that is to create a new uh, super class. So I'll create a class called view. So we'll export a class called view that extends from lit element. And then we override the create render root method to return return this like so. So that turns off the shadow root. So what we need to do then is go into our views and instead of extending from lit element, we'll extend from view like this. We can remove the import like this. And what we can see is that the global styles now apply in our view. Let's go ahead and take care of the second view here before coming back and fixing a couple of things. So we'll import this here like this. We'll remove the unneeded import. And one of the things that you probably noticed here is that we suddenly lost our padding here. And that's something that's defined here in our styles. So that's something to keep in mind uh, if you do turn off shadow root is that you can't use this styles uh, or this way of defining your styles anymore. You need, you need to define them in another way. So for that, I'll create a new file here one view.css and then I'll move that CSS here. So instead of targeting the host element that like we did with shadow root, I will create a selector for one view, which is the tag name like that. So we'll save. And of course we need to import the CSS. So we'll import the one view.css here. And what we can see now is we have the padding back here and everything kind of works the same as it did before. Now let's go ahead and add uh, some more styles here. So to show how this works, I will again go back into the global styles and let's add a style for just a paragraph tag here. So let's make the color red, for instance. And we can see that now we don't have any shadow DOM, our view uh, paragraph here gets colored red. So if we wanted to override that, we need something that's more specific. And the way we can do this is we can define everything within the one view scope by prefixing our selectors with one view. So we could have like one view P color is equal to blue. And that way we can target just the paragraph here and well, we don't have a paragraph in, in the second view, but we can easily do that. Mm, hello, like that. And you can see we have a red paragraph there, but a blue paragraph here. So that's one way of dealing with uh, CSS uh, without Shadow DOM. So we create a view uh, base class that turns off Shadow Root and then we have our CSS in a separate file that we import. Now, another way we could do uh, the scoping, so instead of prefixing everything with the component name, is to use CSS modules. So we already configured those. If you remember here in our Webpack configuration, we had anything that ends with a dot module dot CSS will get treated differently. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll we'll rename this to dot module.css like this. And then we need to go and change the import here. So again, the name changes, uh, module.css, and then we want to have this as a named import. So I will import styles from that file. And let's see if that compiles. Well, we still have an error because we're not using the styles. Now, what this does is it automatically generates unique names for any classes that we have. So let's turn this into a like paragraph, say, let's just call it paragraph for now, uh, our class name. And what we can do then here in our code is we can say that our class should be, and then we can use this styles object 
and we should be able to uh, access the methods on here. Now, for some reason, every once in a while, this doesn't work right out of the box. So you can see that my autocomplete is not picking those up. However, if I if I do type it out, you can see that it does apply here. So the actual thing works. Our, our plugin doesn't work for some reason. Uh, if that happens, you can close your uh, VS code and open it again like so i'll just turn on build again and what you should see now is that once the typescript compiler comes back online should be able to see that we have autocomplete for our styles yep so there you see we have one style here one class paragraph if we add something here Another color is equal to, uh, let's say, green, like this. What we should be able to do is see that we now have another here. So the potential advantage of, of using CSS modules, especially with the TypeScript plugin, is that you would get a compile time error if you don't use styles that the right way. So if you're trying to access something that doesn't exist, if you're trying to apply a class name that you don't have. So if you pre appreciate that kind of extra uh, security, that might be worth it. The way that works under the hood is if we look at the paragraph here, is it generates these uh, unique identifiers for every class so that you don't have collisions between different, between different views. All right, so there you have it. Two ways of dealing with uh, CSS without Shadow DOM in your application. Again, uh, you need to remember that if you do turn off Shadow DOM, you won't have access to some of the web component features like slots and child element support. Uh, but with that in mind, this is a very convenient way of styling your entire application or using existing CSS frameworks like, say, Bootstrap. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, if you have any ideas for new videos, be sure to ask those in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.